not. They're told to do this, and that's it. We need a better program for our kids. How are we going to continue to educate these kids? In fact, my thing is, we cannot improve, improve education. I don't care how much money you put into education. You can't improve it unless you improve the health of our children. You can't improve if we've got sick kids that can't learn. How are we going to pay for this? Who's going to take care of these kids? Where are we heading with this? So I'm just asking you to take this seriously, and let's get down and work with people that have done some of the research independently and not just shut the door on them and figure this out for the safety and the health of our children. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Leanne Ducat. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm a little nervous, so bear with me. Um, I, my speech is actually starting off with a quote from Dr. Paul Offit, who thank you very much for joining us for lunch. We really appreciate it. It's very kind of you. To quote Dr. Paul Offit, you can never really say that MMR doesn't cause autism, but frankly, when you get in front of the media, you better get used to saying it, because otherwise people hear a door being left open when there shouldn't be a door left open. Well, the door has been busted open. How? Because we discovered that recently or recently we discovered that in reality only one vaccine and one vaccine ingredient have ever actually been evaluated for a relationship to autism. When the remaining 37 common ingredients and 15 vaccines have been blatantly ignored, you cannot definitively say that vaccines don't cause autism or any other chronic condition that one in five of our children is currently diagnosed with. I always tell my nine-year-old about integrity, that it means doing the right thing whether someone's looking or not. Well, we're looking. We're all looking. We're looking at why this committee is relying on safety studies that use adjuvants or other vaccines as placebos to downplay adverse events between two control groups. We're looking at why we're giving babies vaccines for STDs on their first lay of life, on their first day of life, excuse me, when mom is not infected, preventing any type of baseline analysis to watch for future neurologic progression. We're looking at why we're vaccinating pregnant women when manufacturers admit no safety evaluations have been conducted on pregnant women or even humans that tiny. We're looking at why vaccines are given to fragile populations like the newborn and elderly when the recommendations are based on incomplete studies funded by the very manufacturers who are immune to liability. We're looking at why the recommendations of this committee only seem to make sense from the perspective of profitability for the pharmaceutical companies and not at all in the interest of public health. We're looking at why this committee is actively dismissing a tsunami of parents and professionals from every racial and socioeconomic demographic vehemently calling for answers, accountability, and immediate change. We're looking at the stark conflicts of interest that riddle this committee and all of its influencing cohorts, including how Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is demanding that the Office of the Inspector General investigate fraud and obstruction of justice committed during the autism omnibus hearing of 2009, leading to the denial of over 5,000 injury compensation claims. We're looking at all sorts of things, but mostly we're looking, planning, and organizing what we're going to do about it. And we'll see you back in February. Thank you so much for your time. Right. Thank Atticus, you. can you bring me a candle? I need to um, prop this I would up. like to remind people to please, at this time, comment specifically on the schedules on which we are voting. Um, the next uh, person is uh, Jamie Juarez. Yes. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm going to read this time. So I'm Jamie Lynn Juarez, and I'm a mother of four amazing children. One is severely injured from vaccines from uh, the particular schedule on agenda items. And he's diagnosed with severe autism, but we all know this is really viral encephalopathy. That's why mothers like me and all of us activists together call it the big lie. He also has seizures. I have two unvaccinated children. They're straight A students. They're voted number one in their division for soccer. And I have another daughter that's mildly injured, recovered, and had a full academic scholarship to University of Laverne. Like many of you on the committee and those in the room, I'm also educated. I did a PhD. My doctorate in education at USC, where I'm currently a candidate. We have accumulated data on thousands of victimized children by vaccine injury, school districts, and social service fraud and child abuse negligence. I'm also a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm a behavior analyst, credentialed school counselor in the state of California, where I've testified in thousands of hearings for thousands of patients, legitimizing that we're dealing with public corruption. 
I'm proudly the president of Hope Inc. Academy, where I've also testified in over $30 million in settlements and a legal system that hides the truth by forced settlement agreements, committing fraud and federal crimes of color lobbyists. If you would like to learn more about me, because I know this is about the agenda item, I am a number one best-selling author of Hope for Autism. So when it comes to this schedule, I think it's really important that we do listen to... Uh, RFK Jr. and his recently petitioned to the Office of Inspector General of the Department of Justice and both uh, congressional judiciary committees to investigate the alleged fraud and obstruction of justice of the two key DOJ lawyers' actions in the 2009 vaccine court omnibus autism proceedings. My son is one of those 5,000 children who's been continuously subject to issues like this schedule and not doing the real data analysis that we need. The complaint by RFK Jr. has now been transferred to the Department of Justice Office, professional responsibility, and we urge everybody here in this room and online to do the same. As you know, in the section of 1928 of the Social Security Act that was established, you are to periodically review as appropriate revise this list for vaccine administration to children and adolescents eligible to receive vaccines through the vaccine program. But this hasn't been done. What you guys are doing is not being done accurately according to the standards of research. In particular, we're not looking at MTHFR, mitochondrial dysfunction, GI issues, immunological sensitivities, which are growing indescribably. Law violated. There's no pre and post studies with independent variables researched against the enormous amounts of viruses, toxins, bacteria in combination. And thank you, Dr. Uh, Offit, for having lunch and those discussions with us for agreeing that perhaps there's some adjunctives in these vaccines that are causing some of the epidemics we're looking at. We can pre-screen, we can do retrospective and prospective studies with control groups, and the data is available. We have the data, ask us for it. There are highly credible doctors and researchers that don't have bias, that are independent of the pharmaceutical companies that are controlling what's happening in our country. I do want to thank President Trump and his administration for his diligence and his assurance that he'll be looking into these things. And lastly, I just want to remind you, hopefully I'm okay on time, I'm not sure, of the World Health Organization Code of Conduct, because we have to be looking at the funding of these studies, the data analysis that you're all doing from Pfizer and, and Merck and all these companies that are funding for the billions of dollars. We have to recommend products that are free of any harm and hold them accountable for liability, and we currently don't have that, as well as we're ignoring whistleblowers in many different arenas. So having said that, I thank you all. I do believe maybe one, maybe two, hopefully all at some point will do the right thing and really take a look at what's happening to our country. Thank you. Woo! Jamie, Jamie Juarez, please. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Jocelyn Gallion. Hi, hello, my name is Jacqueline Gallion. I'm on the board of Informed Choice Washington, and I represent thousands of parents and citizens across the state of Washington who are done following or trusting anything from this committee. You recently recommended two vaccines with new adjuvants that were never safety tested with other adjuvanted vaccines, admitting that in the real world, they would likely be administered with other vaccines, and you had no idea what sort of reaction that would cause. After your unanimous vote, you discussed safety signals that had appeared in clinical trials, and you said you would be watching post-market reportings for reactions. That post-market surveillance is us, the public, and we did not agree to participate in safety trials. No warnings are being given to the people receiving these new vaccines. You simply handed the American public over to the pharmaceutical company like dispensable guinea pigs. These are just two recent examples of how you are putting our lives and our children's lives in jeopardy. It is well known that someone with mitochondrial impairment is more likely to have a vaccine adverse reaction that gets out of control and ends up causing severe injury, even autism. Former CDC Director Julie Gerberding said this on t admitted this on TV, and so did Dr. Kelly and Dr. Zimmerman from John Hopkins recently under oath. 
impairment the Children with mitochondrial impairment are at risk of vaccine injury, leading to autism and other chronic disease. Does the ACIP work to ensure nobody with mitochondrial dysfunction is vaccinated? Does the ACIP recommend screening? No. You do the opposite. You say children can be vaccinated while on antibiotics, and you ignore studies that show antibiotics are one of the many drugs that are toxic to mitochondria. You ignore studies that show acetaminophen is toxic to mitochondria, and you do not warn pediatricians and parents to avoid, avoid it around the time of vaccination. Instead, when vaccination reactions occur, families are gaslighted, and you do, they do not receive proper care to heal the vaccine injury. Aluminum is known to be toxic to mitochondria, but you allow multiple doses of vaccines with aluminum to be administered throughout infancy. And by the time they reach their 12 month or 18 month visit, the aluminum has done its damage. And the next round of vaccines sends them into a serious reaction. So I'm here today to say no. We are done. We are done with your recommendations, done with your guidelines, done with you selling us and our children to pharmaceutical companies. And before you vote on the immunization schedule recommendation changes, these concerns need to be taken into account. And know this, we will not be your test subjects. It is time the American people call for the separation of pharma and state. I'll leave you with a quote by Dr. Stanley Plotkin. Science never completely understands anything. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Miss Denise Aguilar. Yay, Denise. Hi. My name is Denise, and I'm from California, where it is now mandated for our children to be vaccinated in order to go to school. Um, the amount of homeschool children in California has skyrocketed, which says a lot. And I'm really hoping the people who are on their telephones look at the parents that have traveled thousands, hundreds of miles at the to give us a little bit of respect and look at us. We have a problem on our hands and adding more vaccines to the schedule is not a solution. I had to pick my daughter up. She almost killed herself from the HPV vaccine. And here you guys sit, putting more vaccines on the schedule. Thank you so much. Um, Ms. Brandy Vaughn. Hi, everybody. It's my first time at the CDC, but I'm sure some of you know me very well. I used to work for Merck, and now I speak out against the dangers that the pharmaceutical companies don't tell you about pharmaceutical drugs and vaccines. So when I was trained at Merck, which was a very intense uh, training, we were told that all drugs go through a gold standard process, which is a double-blind, placebo-based, long-term studies. Well, for vaccines, as most of you know in here, they don't have to go through that process because they're categor categorized differently. So what's happening is we're seeing a lot of these va vaccines being put onto the market and our children are test subjects. And right now we're seeing almost half of all children with a chronic illness. And if you look at the studies, the independent studies that are not funded by the pharmaceutical companies that, are filled, that have filled this room, and you will see over a thousand studies, more than a thousand studies, showing the harm of the vaccines that are released onto the market without proper testing. So I ask that when you're considering the immunization schedules today, that you really take a step back because our children and adults, you know, in the US, we've never been sicker. Our health is suffering. And I have done a lot of research on the difference between injection and ingestion. Now, this is something the pharmaceutical co companies will never tell you. But anything injected goes straight into the circulation. It goes to vital organs. There's a, a study, a great study on aluminum, which shows that 95 plus percent is absorbed in the body tissues. When you eat something, when you drink something, when you inhale something, 95 percent of that is filtered out through our body's natural detox processes. 
So anything you inject is going to be far, far more dangerous and far more potent. So what's happening now is because the pharmaceutical industry, it's a saturated drug market and it's expensive. There's liability, which unfortunately there's no liability for vaccine makers with, pharma with vaccines. So you're seeing all of these new vaccines in develop, almost, development, almost 300. Because if they can call it a vaccine, they can A, inject the body with toxins and make them far more potent and create further health, sh health issues that sell the drugs that make them, you know, the most powerful industry in the world. And we're seeing them... Wow. ...without liability. So they go through the committee here. And I sat this morning and I was disturbed and I've watched this on the television, you know, on the live stream before, but I was really disturbed. Doctors asking about safety signals and when safety information is going to be available. And the answer is always like mm, five sentences that distract with no real answers. Well, enough people have to be hurt by the vaccine before we'll know if it's safe. Enough people have to die from the vaccine before we'll know it's safe. It's not acceptable because the American population pays really good tax dollars to make sure that this committee is not biased and to make sure that this committee is putting the people of America before the profits of the pharmaceutical industry. And I saw it firsthand when I sold Vioxx for Merck that these agencies, including the CDC and the FDA, are not doing their job anymore. And so I ask you today, when you consider these recommendations, consider all of the children and the adults and all the pregnant women that are going to suffer because of your vote. Because there may be a lot of money backing these recommendations from the pharmaceutical industry, but you are beholden to the American people. Please don't forget your mission. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, uh, I believe that is the end of the public comment period prior to the vote. Um, so the uh, vote is to approve the adult and child adolescent immunization schedules. Um, we will take an electronic vote. Um, can you tell me, is the voting open? Okay, so the voting is open and hopefully uh, successful. So we received all of the votes uh, and the adult and child adolescent immunization schedules were approved uh, oh with 11 God. yeses. Uh, we will go around the room and just confirm those votes. We'll start uh, actually here with Dr. Romero, please. Yes. Lee, yes. Salaji, yes. Moore, yes. Stevens, yes. Zanolo, yes. Bernstein, yes. Matt Moore, yes. Fry, yes. Hunter, yes. Walter, yes. Great, thank you. So the motion passed, and, and I should have said this before the voting took place, but I want to remind everyone that there were no conflicts uh, declared uh, regarding this vote at all prior to the, at, at the beginning of the meeting. Um, so at this time, we can take a break. Uh, we were supposed to come back at 3.15, but I would actually, since we're ending five minutes early, if we could come back at 3.10 um, and get started with the afternoon, um, that would be great. Thank you all. I'll come back up when they do um, the next public commentary. Thanks for watching.